Spokane listens when business talks. Welcome to Business Talks, the region's only local business talk show with your host, Ryan McNeese. Business Talks is brought to you by our friends at STCU and Well-Dressed Walrus. Now, let's get down to business with Business Talks. Welcome to Business Talks. I'm Ryan McNeese, and we're here in the studio with Brad Gisolo, District Manager at Rada Paint, for 25, nearly 25 years. Brad, thank hard you. For, it's hard to believe, yeah. but we're so young. We were once. We were yeah. once. We'll keep believing it. Well, seriously, darn near 25 years with the Rada Paint Corporation, uh, District Manager. How many locations, uh, when we talk about district manager, what does that entail geographically and what does that entail in terms of workforce, sales force? Yeah, for me, it encompasses seven stores, basically everything east of the Cascades in Washington and then into North Idaho. So about 35 people I oversee, seven stores, a mix between you know in-store staff and outside salespeople. And from a geographic standpoint, when you, you mention where the respective district is, that probably requires a certain amount of travel. A little bit of travel, probably a week a month on the road from Wenatchee to Walla Walla. Kind of have a, a loop that I do and end up in, at home in Spokane. You got it down. Yep. yep. Well, uh, it, it's worth noting, although we're not going to focus on it, but amongst many of your responsibilities that you already have as district manager, uh, had a recent property loss in the Spokane Valley facility. Uh, but with that loss, I know you've, uh, as a leader, regrouped. You obviously have the Coeur d'Alene store, the North store. From a management standpoint, how have you dealt with that? It's been an interesting week. As many people know, Sunday night was we kind of had a devastating fire at our Valley store. So um, quickly, we redeployed mm -hmm. those employees. Every employee is still fully employed. We just moved them from the Valley to the North store and a couple to Coeur d'Alene. Brought in a couple extra delivery vehicles to continue servicing our customers that, uh, you know, are very valuable to us and we didn't want to miss a beat there. So we're doing our best to take care of our employees, their families, and our customers. Well, so as they say, the show goes on in the sense that because you've redeployed those resources, uh, whether it be contractors or consumers, uh, they're either getting those uh, uh, supplies through the North or Coeur d'Alene store just like before just like before it's kind of it's really been incredible to f get the feedback from our customers the, you know they've been super supportive visited our north store called in i mean asking if there's anything they can do to help us i mean it's it is really touching i would say mm -hmm. to, to to understand the developed relationships over time and you know i can't say enough about the community you know our employees our customers it's it's been humbling you know well and for you uh, as we mentioned at the outset of the show uh, 25 years, you've seen how the interactions between our community, Rada Paint, and within Rada Paint with the respective managers you've worked with, it, it certainly appears from the outside that uh, folks really stepped up, came together, and as we said, the show goes on. Yeah, I couldn't be more proud of my team, you know, not only the, the team I work for or and work with, but, you know, the, the structure of Rada Paint from where a company owned uh, by Cloverdale, a Canadian mm -hmm. company. So that's our parent company. And, and from the president and the, and the family ownership to the president of RADA to the VP of RADA, which I report directly to, they've all been there. You know, Brad, your team, you, whatever you need, you have, just let us know. Mm -hmm. So the support's been over, just really overwhelming from my perspective. Um, you know, we're actively looking for a temporary location to put back into the valley mm -hmm. to continue to support that business so we don't miss a beat. It's going to be a, you know, a long process to, to get back to normal, but we're going to do our best. Well, I think, as you indicated, when you have manage management coming from Cloverdale in a Canadian location uh, as well as, as Portland, uh, we could come up with all the cliches, but in times of need, in times of challenges, that quite frankly, is when you figure out whether things are working or not. And you clearly have had that opportunity right now. Yeah, they've reached out. I've talked to everybody on the phone. Some of them in person have made the, you know, the trek over to Spokane to have, actually see what we're doing and what, what we're facing here. Mm -hmm. But I've talked to the ownership you know, personally on the phone. I've talked to all the leadership. And, and to a person, it's just please ask what you need, you will get. And yep. they've delivered every time I've asked. So it's been well, great. What are we sitting here on a, a Friday? Uh, you're, you're not even a week out from this occurring. Yeah, I'd, I'm not sure it was Friday until you said that, but it's been yeah. a blur. I mean, <laughs> from Sunday to now is really just a blur. We're trying to take care of things as they come up and 
um, almost surreal still. Yeah. But, you know, we're, we're getting through it. Again, our people are taking care of business. Our customers are supporting us. So all in all, you know, when you face a devastating loss like we did, mm -hmm. you, you really never know what to expect. But I couldn't be more pleased with the people that I work with and our customers. Well, I, from what I've seen, again, from the outside, I first saw the images of it from Sacramento on Sunday. And to see what you've mobilized in terms of that team, kudos to you and your team. Thank you. Uh, uh, in turn, I want to kind of move to the really the psychology. And you and I have talked over the years from a a sales standpoint, uh, and as a district manager, uh, for many years, two decades of your career, you've been a, a top-selling salesperson, which is why, logically, you end up becoming a district manager to manage other sales uh, individuals. And you had such success as a salesman. What, what do you think are some of the key elements that, that create success in not only the sales business uh, in a paint uh, respect, but overall in sales, what's the key? It's basics. Like it's, it's not magic in a can. It's fundamentals. It's the, you got to stick with it. You got to do what you say you're going to do. You have to follow up, but you just have to be consistent. I would say consistency and communication are the two basic fundamentals along mm -hmm. with having talent to sell things, but yeah. you, you just have to be consistent and continue to do what you say you're going to do and follow through. But I, and, and I think you're, you're spot on. I think what fascinates me, though, is although we can both say that is a fundamental, or those are the key uh, pieces, not asking you to, uh, you know, to your own horn necessarily, but you did accomplish those fundamentals at a high level different than other individuals. And why is it, do you think, in a, uh, a management scenario, why is it that some folks, even though some of those fundamental pieces uh, can be taught, but then they're not implemented. What's yeah. the difference between a somebody really knocking it out of the park and somebody not running with it? Yeah, I think that's the most interesting part, in, and it's really a study in psychology. Mm -hmm. Some motivational tactics work for some people, and they don't work at all for others. So you you really got to find what motivates that individual that, and, and unlock it within them. It, for me, I'm a super competitive person. I don't like <laughs> I don't like losing. You you know that. No, and, Brad. I, yeah. I don't even know that I would say that. And f so for me, I always envision a sports field, or mm. you know, tying it back to a scenario like that. And the the closest thing to scoring a goal, or you mm -hmm. know, hitting the winning free throw, or whatever it may be, is uh, getting a sale. So mm -hmm. that that's kind of what motivated and lit the fire for me is tying it back to my youth and athletics and my desire to win. Yeah, I think that's a good example, though, yeah. because uh, individuals that have had uh, experience on respective uh, fields, courts, et cetera, uh, whole different examples of sports analogies, but there is a certain feeling of a, adrenaline and game time, and uh, I think that's what you're tapping into or what you're describing is how can you, if you're not doing that now, so to speak, how do you replace that? And professionally, right. I think that's what you're saying is that there are opportunities to do that. Correct. You could still kind of go get that, that feeling of victory when we're too old or not getting paid to do sports. Yeah. We're, we're getting paid to have a career and mm -hmm. selling paint or selling whatever. You could kind of tie it back, at least for my competitiveness, is that's the easiest way for me to, to view winning right. is tie it back to sports. Yeah, and, and sometimes even the win or the loss, per se, uh, the competition in and of itself to go after that that win uh, yeah, the thrill oftentimes. the thrill of the hunt so to speak yeah yeah, yeah. uh and you you talked about the uh the geography of the respective district uh do you feel like uh with the resources that you've had and and the travel that you mentioned a, a week potentially a, a month you feel like you're able to effectively cover that area are there other challenges that uh you've had to overcome you know there's there's always challenges the farther you get away from home. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the travel, it's a lot of people travel a lot farther than I do, but to be effective, you really have to have a plan. You, again, very, very consistent mm -hmm. to deliver the results you want when you're traveling overnight to a, a Wenatchee or a Yakima, you want to maximize your time there. So right. you really have to be prepared, follow a schedule and have good people, you know, on the ground in those cities to represent the brand. Which isn't easy to do sometimes. You know, our economy is really, really strong, so mm -hmm. it's difficult to find good people because everybody has work. Um, but we do have very good people. 
we've had them in place for a long time, and especially in those outlying areas, mm-hmm. we have strong staff that really represent the brand well. What do you what do you think about because on a, a weekly daily basis you're interacting with these people whether it be Tri Cities Moses Lake Yakima Wenatchee, etc. This concept in business of of having to be in person versus obviously the progression of technology that whether you're doing a, a software Zoom video conferencing etc. What do you feel the the benefit advantage or disadvantage to be in front of somebody is it is it worth it to do all the travel? Sometimes, not all the time. What do you think yeah, about I think that? That's a good question. I think there's a balance to be had. I, you know, ten years ago, I would have said face to face is the only way mm-hmm. to go. There's so many dynamics that you, you know, body language, those type of things that you can only get when you're face to face. And today, it's much more acceptable to do, you know, whether it's video FaceTime, video conferencing, even some just basic teleconferencing. But mm-hmm. You have to build the, the foundation, the solid relationship first before those tools are effective, in my opinion. It's really hard to read somebody's, mm-hmm. again, body language mm-hmm. if you're on a phone or on a video conference. And just even the logistics of a, a video conference and knowing right. when to talk and when to listen because there's that delay totally. sometimes inhibits a good relationship from forming. But but you're making a good point there. If you've already met the person, established a relationship, you might know how generally the cadence of that conversation goes. So some of those stutters, stops, et cetera, might not be a big deal. But if you are trying to uh, critically make a sale, change something significant in the management process, I, I, I actually agree that, that that's where the in-person becomes fairly pragmatic. Yeah, I would liken it. If you're, if you're going through a sales process, you'd want to go all the way through the process, mm-hmm. probably obtain some commitments or working towards some sort of agreement before you mm-hmm. tie into virtual sales or virtual meeting status, hmm. email, teleconference, video conference. I, you, you know, you yeah. really need to build that solid foundation. I've always been interested in that because in, a, in the legal profession, whether it's depositions or uh, further discovery by video conference or otherwise, some of those same issues come up. That The body language, are you getting everything you should be getting from that particular uh, uh, technological interaction? So it's a constant issue. I've just, I've always been fascinated with the cost benefit, the, the the heavy costs when people are flying, even you know, if you're outside that district and you're flying to San Diego, flying to Portland, is it worth it? Yeah, and and that's really, really, really hard to you know quantify. Yeah, and put it onto a, a risk reward scenario. Right. But there's nothing more frustrating to be in a in a video conference and you're getting right to the the meat and potatoes of the the meeting right. and your technology freezes up and the screen pixelates and you right. drop the call and you really gain nothing. Right. So you lost the point, you lost the sale potentially. I mean, you uh, lose all the momentum in the conversation. Right. So all those things are technology's great, but it still doesn't beat face to face. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, what I want to talk about is uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, Brad having uh, over two decades, nearly 25 years with Rada Paint in the construction and paint industry. Uh, we're excited at, at Spokane Talks that Brad is going to be uh, hosting House to Home, uh, our show that primarily deals with and focuses with all issues related to uh, to the home, to construction, home ownership, et cetera. And so we'll come right back from a break and talk about Brad taking over as a, a co-chair and filling that seat on House to Home uh, and further hosting uh, discussions. Talk to you in a bit. Hi, this is Kurt Stockwell with Well-Dressed Walrus. We are a local website design and development company here in Spokane. What we do is build beautiful, usable websites for local businesses. A website needs to be beautiful. It needs to be usable for your users, your customers, and yourself. Contact us anytime. We'd love to talk with you about your online marketing. I'm Jade Becker and I'm a senior at Chihuahua High School. I'm at STCU's Money Live event. In this scenario that we played today, I was a realtor. My spouse was a city worker. We had an 11 month old child and there was a lot of spending for that child, like diapers and formula and how to buy toys and clothing. (laughs) I'm very glad that I had this experience. It was super helpful. You need this to get far and ahead in life. 
I'm Jade Becker, and STCU is here for good. The following is sponsored by our friends and community supporters at McNeese Wheeler Attorneys. McNeese Wheeler is a boutique law firm in Spokane, handling matters in both Washington and Idaho. Areas of law include business law, wills, trusts and estates, family law, personal injury and wrongful death, and real estate matters. For your full-service legal needs, contact McNeese Wheeler Attorneys. Welcome back to Business Talks. I'm Ryan McNeese, and we've been here in the studio of Brad Gisolo, 25-year uh, member, team member at Rada Paint, district manager at Rada Paint. And right before the break, uh, we were getting excited and talking about the uh, the fact that Brad's going to take over as the host of House to Home. Clyde Hawsey is still going to be doing several episodes a year. Uh, but we're excited that, Brad, you're going to be doing some hosting. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be a fun fun journey. You're an obvious choice for this position because, as we've been discussing, significant over two decades in this industry and so many contacts and associations uh, in the construction and paint industry. Uh, so logical choice for this position. What We've talked uh, over the last several months, several years actually, about – I'd say what you're going to bring to the table in terms of types of guests and types of industries. What are some of those thoughts as to what you feel like you're going to start doing with these guests? Yeah, it's going to be exciting. I I'm, I look forward to bringing in a variety of guests, mm -hmm. you know, from just general contractors, painting contractors, some of my own experience. I just did a, a kitchen remodel, right. so some, some pitfalls and some really cool things we did there and to share some of that advice. But, uh, you know, Mark Peterson, we do some work yep. with him. I, I, I really enjoy doing the, the extreme team with him. So mm -hmm. we'll probably try to get him on. We'll see. Well, and you've done multiple projects of, with the extreme team. We have. And uh, Joel White at the Spokane Home Builders, just, he doesn't know it yet, but I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> he does with, now. He does now. Yeah. We're members. We're active there, but he, he can bring a lot of insight mm -hmm. into the building industry, you know, the trends, what's coming up, you know, what how, what's the health of the industry look mm -hmm. like? Is it single family? multifamily, you know, what, just what's going on out there. I think we'll be able to bring a pulse of all those things going on mm -hmm. in the industry to the to the viewers, to the listeners. It's going to be fun. Well, I, I think you're hitting the nail on the head that uh, I think why this will be such a good uh, show and what you'll be able to bring uh, to our listeners is how all of these different industries come together, it, whether it be at a home, residential or commercial, but whether you're talking painting, electrical, uh, uh, f framing, interior design, flooring. There are so many different facets, which most, most of our listeners have experienced this, but whether you built a home, renovated a home, uh, it really is a complex uh, undertaking to do some of these projects. And as you just said, you personally, not only were swinging the hammer, so to speak, literally, yep. uh, you've worked with all these uh, respective uh, tradespeople to do it. And it isn't easy. So I think you're going to be able to provide pointers through yourself as well as through the guests. Yeah, I think it can be overwhelming for anybody when you take on a task that's kind of out of the normal scope of your life. So whether you're doing a remodel, you're considering buying a new house. I mean, I've been in the paint industry for 24 years, mm -hmm. but it has connected me with real estate agents, all kinds of different subs, general contractors, whether it's residential, commercial. So while I do paint and I mm -hmm. work in the paint industry, I'm connected and I've worked with so many other industries and people and personalities that I'm looking forward to bring onto the show and just chat about their life and you know what they do. And most of it's going to be tied back to construction. I think that's actually kind of almost circles back to some of what we were talking about. You as a successful salesperson, as well as as a district manager, that as you're indicating, you've had so much success over the years connecting these dots in these different industries that if you focused just on paint versus how all of these people come together in a in a larger broader industry uh that might be problematic but you've brought these folks together and i, I think that is very true what you just said you've done a good job of that over the years uh you know in spokane uh the lifeblood of spokane or the bread and butter if you will of spokane has been construction in in these mini trades and you've been kind of boots on the ground in these in these trades with these individuals yeah and 
some people might call me a connector. I love putting mm-hmm. people that I, I respect, I like together. And if you need this done, hey, I know a guy that can do this for you. So I, I look forward to just chatting about that stuff, talking about that stuff. And, you know, small business mm-hmm. is how America has been built. And I love to use and work with local people. Mm-hmm. You know, national brands are great, but I always love supporting the local people when you can. So we'll see a lot of that. I think you'll see a lot of that influence come onto the show. Well, and uh, some folks will say that, that I like to work with local individuals versus national brands. But I, I, I'll give you credit that I think even on your own home project, uh, you've done a good job of backing that up in reality, whether you're dealing with Jamie Rigsby uh, as an electrician that just does an amazing job and and working with him that allows you to work with some of these other trades people to bring it all together versus, uh, you know, we're not trying to make a point of knocking national brands, but rather when you're working with these individuals, as an example, Jamie Rigsby, uh, you're actually talking to Jamie. You're not talking to somebody that's representing somebody in San Francisco. You're talking to the person that connects you to the next resolution. You're talking to the owner and the tradesperson who's doing the work on your house or your yeah. building or whatever it may be. So, and quite frankly, on my remodel, while it was small, I used a mix of national brands, local companies. Mm-hmm. You know, you just got to find good people and do business with the people that you're comfortable with. Yeah. yeah. And for you, uh, talking on house to home, uh, coming up with different guests, given that you have seen literally thousands of different home projects, whether it be on the residential, commercial, paint, uh, as well as working with Mark Peterson, working on your own home. I I do think that's a perspective that until you've had that tangible, hands-on perspective, it's hard to give advice, quite frankly, or at least credible advice, but you've lived it. You've seen the good, you've seen the bad, and there's plenty of both. I, th- I think you're going to be a, a voice of, uh, uh, well, I think just practical, pragmatic advice. Yeah, just I, I look at myself as the average consumer. I happen to be in the paint business. I'm not an expert in all things construction, but I've learned from experts. I've worked with many experts in all kinds of different, you know, uh, fields. Mm-hmm. Whether again, you said Jamie Rigsby, mm-hmm. he's an electrician. I, I I learned a lot about doing electrical work by watching him help me on my house. But was that before or after you already pulled the wall down? <laughs> well, a little bit of both. I'm not sure what he would have advised, but he probably would have said, "Be careful of the wires I left hanging." But he assured me when he got there that they were still safe. Okay. Um, you know, but I met a lot of good people that were referred to me by him and mm-hmm. the people that I used on that project, and I would refer to other people. So. I like networking, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's in the construction or it's in our personal life or I like networking and meeting new people. So that's the most exciting part for me is to bring some of those people on the show. And, I, and I'm that's gonna, what I'm excited. About I'm going to meet a ton of new people doing it. It's going to be awesome. Well, be I think fun. I think that's going to be personally satisfying and exciting for you. I think that's the piece you're going to be able to provide to the listening public uh, that are looking to undertake these jobs, too. Hey, we all are going to be buying furniture Hiring contractors, whether it be HVAC, painting, electrical, framing, you name it, uh, you look around your house, and those are the folks that you've interacted with over the last 24, 25 yeah. years. Uh, I'm excited about that. I, I, what we've tried to do at Spokane Talks is uh, uh, really bring some tangible uh, conversations and opportunities uh, that can benefit people here in the Spokane and, and broader region. That's what we're shooting to do. And what I get a kick out of what you said earlier is, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm fairly competitive and whatnot. Yeah. Okay, well, that might be an understatement. People, so, that, people that know me might know that that's understated yeah. just a little bit. But my point was going to be positive. You're a competitive individual, but that plays out in the things we've been talking about uh, in terms of being a connector uh, in our community in these different trades. Uh, you've done a fantastic job of that over the years which has played out, as we indicated at the top of the show, uh, played out in uh, being very successful in the sales business specifically in paint, which then you've moved uh, to the district manager role and are kind of imbuing that that success and that uh, advice to some of your uh, salesmen at RADA. So it's been exciting to see. We're excited to see what's going to happen with House to Home. So I'd encourage you here in the future, please tune in on SpokaneTalksMedia.com to our house to home show uh, so that you can see Brad kicking that off. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Thanks, Brad. 
Business Talks is produced in Spokane, Washington by SpokaneTalksOnline.com, which is solely responsible for its content. Ask a question, recommend a guest, and hear this program again online anytime at SpokaneTalksOnline.com. Business Talks is brought to you by our friends at STCU and Well-Dressed Walrus. Business Talks wishes you good business and a good day.